What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Gmaya's World. And yes, I did come very close to Rachel and Jerry Rice. I explained to you guys a lot of what went on uh, during this most recent weekend league. It is one of our best weekend leagues uh, to date. Uh, one of the major issues that you're going to understand, even if you're new to Madden or you're a veteran, it's all about the best type of glitch that you can find in the game. It's unfortunate, but that's what the game has become. Uh, the skill-based aspect of it has really been lacking over the last four or five years. So there's a lot more fluke plays, there's a lot more things going on, and we have to take advantage of those things that make us a better player. So you may run into guys that are running, you know, nickel wide, uh, nickel 335 wide, um, you know, nickel odd, things like that, because it gives an advantage, but it's nothing different than previous years. Um, you know, you used to have loot blitzes and everybody had LT with that specific blitz like two years ago. It's pretty much the same thing, but now people put Montez Sweat on the edge and the dude comes in like he doesn't care about what's going on. But regardless of all of that, you're going to play some players that really understand what's going on with the game. And when that does happen, you have to have something that that other player doesn't have. So I have to explain to you guys what's going on. Jerry Rice being 6'2", he's not the ideal player that you want to moss with. Some of you guys understand you've been labbing it. It hasn't been consistent. And the reason that, you know, mossing is not as consistent as it was in 20 is because EA recognized that, you know, once I put it out there, a lot of you guys were able to do it. Now I see very, very few people do it because it is a lot more difficult to do this year, uh, especially in head-to-head -head and weekend league. Um, pretty much what they've done is they've made it more, um, they've made it easier for the defender to just go into an animation and intercept the ball. So it's up to you to make the right plays, uh, you know, pretty much when you throw the ball in the air, uh, how to make your player come down with it. So this is what I was considering. I was saying to myself, you know what? DK Metcalf, the dude is 6'3", all that good stuff. He probably, you know, he has very good jump. He has a lot of stuff that we could probably rock with. So I'm like, you know what? It wouldn't really hurt us to go and try him out. But then I realized he's a physical receiver and his route running is gonna really be an issue. Now, some of you guys are like, yo, you don't need route tech on Jerry Rice. That is a lie because yeah, he'll run his routes good, but route tech is just next level. And when you play people, what's been happening is there's a lot of people out there that are running around with one step ahead, right? And with the way that it works, it's very, very difficult to deal with any type of player that is actually actively doing that because they're always going to be able to catch up or they'll let you throw the ball a little bit behind so that the one, you know, so that the one step ahead can activate because they have to justify the play itself, like the ability, they have to justify it. So I know you guys will notice that like, yo, my guy's wide open. Jemiah, why isn't he catching it? He's not catching it because EA doesn't want you to catch it because that one step ahead has to be able to get that. So with route tech and very good route running, he's going to be able to get that extra step. So that's one of the major things that's going on with the situation when it comes to Jerry Rice. And you guys have to understand that. And I did too, because the stream had like the stream was like, no, nah, we're not doing that. We're not getting rid of Jerry Rice with DK, uh, even though DK has good numbers in certain cases. And he'll probably with that one inch. This is the thing, right? DK looks visibly bigger than Jerry Rice in the game. And that has a lot to do with the way that they animate. Like if you look at uh, Randy Moss, he looks sort of like Slenderman. Like he's just a long dude. Like if you just jump up in the air, he's gonna be able to go and get the ball. Similar to Calvin Johnson. That's one of those, like Calvin Johnson just doesn't have the speed. When Calvin Johnson gets the right speed, it's a, listen, it's a no brainer. The best thing that could have happened for any of us is that Calvin Johnson played for the Raiders. You know what I'm saying? Cause then it would be on, but to go for a Lions theme team, to just get him at 97 speed right now is not really worth it. But those players will be coming later. E even like Harold Carmichael. Those guys will be pretty good options later on. They have to get other cards because obviously you have to go end game. But right now, Jerry Rice does a decent job for mossing for me, right? He'll moss, he'll do certain things, um, you know, that other players realistically can't do. But the problem is because he is not built that way in the game to where it looks like he's bigger than most of the corners, they'll get the advantage more often than not. Randy Moss is usually at this point like 94, 95%. If I throw it over there, I'm going to moss you. This guy, he usually, he was up high last week. Now it's just like over the last weekend league, I lost uh, a specific game because he just sold. Like he just didn't jump and usually he does. So I just wanna make sure that I point out to you guys, um, you're gonna need deep out. You're gonna definitely need the deep out ability if you're looking to try to moss dudes. Um, preferably if you can fit in the deep out and the deep in, it'll work so that you can moss anywhere on the field, but you're gonna need the deep out ability to be able to moss. He works out well because he also um, you know, gets route, route technician for two. So that's actually you know, pretty good. 
Do I need to have him as an option to Moss? Yes. And that is one of the questions that a lot of you guys have been asking. And it's like, why? Why do you need him as an option? It's pretty much you. Once people start double teaming people, it's very, very, it's not like last year. In Madden 20, you could Moss four or five guys uh, with streak specialists. You can't do that anymore. Okay, once the max your Moss is two, anything outside of that, you're going to get picked off. It doesn't really matter. Like they, they put an end to it because it was getting wild. And um, that's something that they had to do because, like I said, everybody was doing it. With this right here, though, the way that I have it set up with my ability points, I feel that Puller Elite does something with Richie Incognito. All right, I, I feel that it works for me in my run game. Uh, some of you guys may feel that it doesn't. Some of you guys may say, you know what? Uh, I don't run that. I run all day. I run post up. But I feel that it works for me. And it, and it has. It has been working for me because the run game is based off of Power O this year. They've run. They've gone away from the stretch because stretch was too OP. So even when like you get a successful stretch run, they'll make it so that players catch up to you. Like these EA developers, they don't try to fix what the problem is. They make it easier to like try to contain it. So they'll cheat a little bit. You won't really get the maximum amount of yards. And they actually wrote it in one of the um, the title updates. They were like, yo, look, we added some you know new technology to stretch or some kind of crap to kind of nerf it. Pretty much is what it is in a summation, right? So power O and dive, it'll get you maximum yards. It, like You'll get maximum yardage all the time. So I feel that you need at least one O-line ability. As far as your, your, uh, your right tackle and your left tackle, you know, I feel I have decent ones. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's very, very fortunate for me because a lot of you guys make fun of these two guys. Like, yo, you really running around with Richie Incognito and Rodney Hudson? Yeah, I am. And don't forget, they are big boys. They're similar, like like Quentin Nelson. These guys are big boys. So they real they do what they're supposed to do. Now, if you're getting turbo blitz, if you like listen, if a guy comes out and he's turbo blitzing you out of big nickel or three three five wide or whatever kind of stuff, you know, I was doing it out of four six normal. Um it doesn't matter how good your O lineman is, because it's pretty much you're just taking advantage of guys, you know, blitzing, and then you're coming in as a user, and you're kind of counteracting the fact that they have nano detection in the game. So because of nano detection, it creates a situation where it's like, all right, I still have to get pressure. You're gonna get turbo blitz. They will get through that gap unless you block an extra player. What do I mean by that? The tight end, right? Sometimes you have to block your tight end. Sometimes you have to block your running back to stop that, but. These players are very big boys. So when you guys are laughing at the fact that they're so, you know, you look like, yo, Jibai, what are you doing running around with an 88 and 87 in the middle with all these 96s all over the place? Realistically speaking, it just makes more sense to do it the way that I'm doing it right now, the way that it is. So it works for me right here. I'm going to utilize it this way. Once they get upgrades, it's going to be GGs because the run game is going to be more OP. Obviously, you know, the defense is going to get better as well, but... These guys being 300 plus pounds is a real reason why the interior of my O-line, you know, it serves to get me decent yardage when I go after it. So I wanted to make sure that everybody understood all of what goes into, you know, me trying to raid sell a player. I know it seems like I just go crazy and it's like, yo, this guy is gone. But I really think out the process of how this guy has to go. Because now I have a definite mosser in Randy Moss. Like if you give me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to moss you. Like it's not, it is what it is. You're going to get exactly what's coming to you if you give me one-on-one. -on -one. But when you double-team him or triple-team him, I need that other side. Calvin Johnson, some of you guys made that suggestion. Yo, why don't you go back to Calvin? Because Calvin doesn't have the route running or the speed. A 95-speed receiver in this game right now is an absolute joke. If you have a 95-speed receiver on your team, I don't know what you're doing, but you have to stop it. Okay? It needs to stop immediately, and you got to seek help. Because it's not you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You need to get players out there that are fast and have route running. You're going to have to be a little bit more patient now because we don't have a lot of those players that are ideal in this situation where you can have a counter on the other side that can go up and get the ball. Like I said, Harold Carmichael uh, and Calvin Johnson, if you give me Calvin Johnson with 98 speed, I'm good. Like if his next card has 98 speed, I'm end game, I'm happy. If you beat me, you beat me and I'm good. But you're going to have to double team both sides of the field and I don't care. And then I'll run the ball and do other weird stuff that'll frustrate you. And you'll be like, yo, this guy right here, this guy right, yo, like what the, but that's what it is. Jerry Rice being undersized, but working out for the theme team, it works. But I could always put Jerry into the slot if I got somebody that was bigger outside. So for now, it doesn't make any sense for me to get rid of Jerry Rice uh, based on all the feedback that I got from the stream. Right now, we got to take it easy. Um, 
the physical receiver archetype is one of the major reasons. If you guys ever want to check out what's supposed to be going on with those physical cams and what you can get, just check out your free player that you have with Andre Johnson and it gives you an idea of what you need to unlock everything and how it works. And um, you know, it pretty much helps you out a lot to, to know what you have to expect when you go. That's why I don't need to go and look at DK Metcalf. I know his archetype and I got Andre Johnson. I can evaluate and look at his attributes from the auction house and figure out what I need. And it doesn't make any sense for me to spend two for deep out and then his route running is not as good. I lose route technician. So many things happen by me getting DK Metcalf. Now he's fast and everything looks good like that, but it still doesn't work out. So I don't like the archetype, but it is what it is. We'll figure it out uh, going forward, how we're going to do it. And um, you know, we'll take it from there. But Jerry Rice is gonna live to last another day and um, we'll figure it out, man. You know, like I said, I might have to give him another ability, but I don't know how I'm gonna adjust the way that I have everything going right now. Uh, but he's been suitable for me, and I'll be tweeting out some some clips of him mossing all weekend league. But when I need him in the clutch, I need him to jump. He just didn't that one time, and I actually hated him for it and wanted him gone. But, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Will he be gone soon? Probably. But as of right now, we're gonna keep him. All right. Go ahead and leave me all your feedback. As of right now, there is new, no new content. Tomorrow, we should be getting Team of the Week. If you're excited about Team of the Week, go ahead and write T-O-T-W in the comment section, and we can talk about that in the comments until they release it, uh, possibly tomorrow. All right, guys, more info coming. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. Make sure you also subscribe to GMods World Gaming and also GMods World Podcast right here on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch, all at GMods World, and I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love, y'all.